Welcome to Cursed, a bi-weekly podcast that investigates the liminal spaces, from everyday witchcraft to the haunted and the phantasmic. Hang out with us as we explore our personal experiences with the unknown and celebrate our craft. And now, Episode 3, The Fair Folk of Appalachia. Okay, so real quick before we get started, i uh, going to do our Patreon shoutouts for our awesome patrons. We have Tori, Melissa, Tamara, Joanne, and Rachel the Pickety Witch. I know later in this episode we only talk about having one, but that's because we shot this like months ago. So ignore that because we have even more people now. So thank you guys. It means a lot to us and we couldn't be happier that you want to give us your money. So now on to the episode. Uh, do we have a title? Um, sure. (laughs) Uh, This is, I guess the little people is what it turned into. Okay. It was going to be the moon-eyed people, and then I fell down a rabbit hole, an Appalachian Cherokee rabbit hole. Hey, that's a good rabbit hole, though. Yeah. I'm I'm all about that rabbit hole. So, I have been doing reading. You have luckily been in the dark, so you get to learn all about them. I'm excited. And let's see. So, I guess we'll start with the Moon-Eyed People. Now, it's a Cherokee legend. They're these, um, they're not fairies. They're not considered supernatural. They considered them a a whole separate race. So, they don't follow their folklore with the fairy folk or the little people. I'll get into those because some say that they're very similar. Uh, Others say that they were a race. And some weird stuff that popped up. Basically, what you're going to get is they were this race of small people. They did not look like the Cherokee. They are called the Moon-Eyed People, not because their eyes are big or all this. They were were supposedly very sensitive to light. So they Mm. came out at night, and they're even said to, even a full moon might be too bright. Their eyes are very sensitive. Oh, wow. So they're a smaller race. They're white, bearded, and cave-dwelling, and they live underground. So because they're so photosensitive... They tend to be more nocturnal and to take refuge in, you know, caves and things like that. That's interesting. They they kind of just said they lived underground. Uh, we don't really, I couldn't find any like origin of them or where they started. But uh, it's kind of throughout Georgia and North Carolina mm-hmm. that you find some structures that are attributed to them. They're definitely considered man-made. Okay. Uh, they're not like weird formations. Mm-hmm. One of them is described as like a fortress. It's really kind of weird. So just over the North Carolina state line is Fort Mountain in Georgia. Mm-hmm. And there is an 850 foot wall mm-hmm. varying in height, about two feet to six feet. And it spans the top of the ridge. Hmm. Now, Cherokee legend says that the origin of that wall came from a war with the Moon-Eyed people. So, so there was a, a Cherokee and Moon-Eyed people conflict? Apparently, uh, because what I found, I guess a war or a conflict, they were first mentioned in 1797 in a book by Benjamin Smith Barton, and then later documentation mentioned similar accounts. They kind of say that they were driven out into like Western Tennessee from, Hmm. I guess, Murphy is where, because there's a statue that I'll talk about that they found in Murphy, North Carolina. I don't know how far that is from us, but probably- Let's look it up. Probably easy to find. That wall in Georgia is kind of a zigzagging stone wall, and there's some really cool pictures of it. Uh, It's up to 12 feet thick and up to 7 feet high in some places. They can't determine the age of the wall, but Mm. some sources say uh, 400 to 500 AD. Oh, wow. Kind of old, and the Cherokee don't attribute it to them having built it. So nobody really knows. Uh, so there's this great big man-made structure of this wall there, and nobody's making which, ownership of it. Which we should go look at. Yeah, so I looked it up. Murphy is about four and a half hours away from us. Okay. So that's doable. Sure. <laughs> um, so the legends say it was raised by either the Moon-Eyed people mm-hmm. or Maddock, which I think I'm pronouncing that right, who was a Welsh prince who... Supposedly came to America in 1170. Now, here I thought, okay, there's some real stuff to this. And some people think 
these were pre-Columbian Welsh settlers, and that's why uh, they look so different. There's accounts of uh, him coming over. I can touch on it some, but there's a legend of Prince Maddock and the White Indians. With these stone structures being found, uh, there's lots of mounds involved. They attribute to the uh, little people or maybe the moon-eyed people living okay. in the mounds um, and some of these structures. Some of these, they don't really know why they existed or what for. I know we have a lot of mounds around here and um, they use them for burial as mm-hmm. well. Yeah. So I guess they don't attribute all of those to them. This idea that they maybe came from Welsh, these white Indian theory, kind of came up. I looked at it and it, it kind of, the legend was there, kind of got conflated and mixed with uh, the Moon-Eyed People. So as exciting and cool as it sounded, kind of seems like it's a debunkable theory where it's like there's no real evidence that there was a tribe in Mobile Bay, Alabama is where they were supposedly landing and then they moved on and were never heard from again, not unlike Roanoke. Yeah. And then there's supposed theories and stories of like Welsh-speaking white Indian tribes all this and that. But it turns out that Whoa. it doesn't really seem to be connected. Might just be a theory and it got popularized. And we also know uh, that there are Viking explorers who made it over here to the quote unquote new world way, way, way before Columbus and those expeditions mm-hmm. and everything. Maybe that's so interesting. Yeah, you because can't even... ignore the, co- the fact that as far as the Moon Eyed people are concerned, I think that they are kind of, they can kind of be connected to it. Yet, mm-hmm. um, I guess the general theory seems to be that, uh, that's not necessarily the case. But of course, like anything, these things and legends cross over. There's theories and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's a cool little, um, but I guess it's Prince Matic. Mm-hmm. So there, there's something to look into there. And I had definitely gotten ready to plunge into all of that. But then I kept seeing, well, this was something that popped up. When the Moon-Eyed people kind of became more common knowledge outside of, I guess, the Cherokee, it mm. was, oh, those that must have been this story I've heard or this and that. So I'm not saying that it's ruled out completely, but I, it just wasn't the path I thought I was going to go in in my research. Right. I thought, okay, well, this is going to go into it. And, and that's that's very common because I think as people, as humans, we are often trying to understand why things do the things that they do. We're always trying to explain it. And I mean, that's one of the reasons that we have mythology in the first place uh, is to explain the things that we didn't know how to explain. So we created a lot of myths and legends. I I think it's very understandable that we get into this area where it becomes a little bit more complicated. Well, maybe it was this, maybe it wasn't, you know, there, some people say it was, some people say it wasn't because everybody has their own ideas of what it may or may not be. So, yeah, and I mean, that's, you know, going to come with um, speculation and all that. Back to the Moon Eyed people, at least what we know, what we're going to get into in a minute is the little people and the idea of them being in Appalachia as far up as like past Virginia and mm-hmm. and down further south than us yeah. uh, in North Carolina. But the consensus is um, I've seen them try to be tied to the little people and their name is... The Cherokee word is Nunnehi. Nunnehi. And that means little people. Now, those were considered more spirit, fairy, dwarves. And then you get into the Yunwi Hunsti. You'll have to show me that one. Those are kind of like the the race of small humanoid nature spirits, Mm -hmm. like fairies and dwarves. However, the Cherokee were very adamant in their legends that the Moon-Eyed people were a human race. Mm -hmm. Fair-skinned, bearded. Uh, sensitive eyes, um, nocturnal. Um, they drove them out into kind of Tennessee. There are connections to them being related to these spirits and kind of little people. However, the Cherokees, little people looked like them mm-hmm. and they were like smaller versions of them. That's not what the moon eyed people were. I think with legends, they've been connected, but they're not necessarily in the same realm. You're talking about something that's a nature spirit dwarves fairies and then they're saying hey no no this was a race of underground cave dwelling people yeah um i couldn't really figure out what caused the issue or mm-hmm. the rift there's just legends of them being driven out we talked about the mounds and that wall weirdly enough there is a statue that was found on a farm it was found in murphy north carolina in 1840 hmm. but it wasn't 
available for public display until 2015. Um, That's a big span of time. Yeah, it's a real, real fucking big span of time. Why was it not um, I don't know. That, that just seems to be... So, a farmer found it digging his land. Um, okay. There's a picture of it we can put up. It's in the Cherokee County Historical Museum. There are two humanoid slash creature looking things. They look like little greys. Mm-hmm. Even though everyone's pretty adamant they're not connected to aliens. But, I mean, that's another thing that you talk about... The Brown Mountain Lights, Mm -hmm. um, the UFO sightings, Mm -hmm. um, in that whole area. I'm not saying it wasn't. (laughs) Um, You know what I mean? Especially because they're not even considered like some kind of fairy race. Yeah. In the rock, they're conjoined almost. Oh, it's beautiful. They're about three feet tall and they were created from soapstone, but they weren't carved. They were through, they were created through a process called pecking. So you take a harder rock and Mm -hmm. you basically peck out that detail so the fact that they've got so almost like a chisel almost yeah and so the fact that you've gotten this statue that was found nobody has any idea now it's not even really connected to the moon-eyed people but considering that got legends that are coming out of that area Mm -hmm. out of cherokee county this was found nothing else has been found that resembles it they don't know who created it but it was found near two rivers and they think that each figure represents that river supposedly um but that's kind of where the legend of the Moon-Eyed People was, too. So that's why they're connected. It's a really cool little statue. It obviously, to know that they pecked it and didn't just carve it, and that they did that with another stone is kind of awesome. Like I said, I showed you the picture kind of on display. The other thing that this museum, which I would love to check out, has, Absolutely. and that aren't too far removed from the Moon-Eyed People, are, and I don't know if you've heard about this in the area, um, the Cherokee stone crosses. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, there's legend there that they, um, were the tears from the fairy folk, the little people, the Yunwe Hunsi. What did you, what did we say? What uh, are we doing? Hold on. I'm going to, I'm actually, I have another pronunciation guide that was really good. It goes phonetically. They're okay. Really, I, I told you the wrong thing. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> so yeah, the idea of the, um, Yunwe Chunsi. Mm-hmm. Like I said, we're probably off a little bit on that. But it and meant I, the little people. Yeah, I, I, um, I know a little bit of Chilagi, which is uh, the native language of the of the Cherokee people. But I, it's not near anywhere fluence. Uh, and it's it's really just all self-taught. So <laughs> Well, and so, uh, like I said, I mean, we the Moon-Eyed people, that's about all we know. Um, mm-hmm. You can fall into that hole of the Welsh. Mm. Uh, white Indian legend. Uh, it even says Lewis and Clark were um, tasked with trying to find this supposed tribe. Uh, that's how prevalent the, the legend was. But there's been no proof for anything else of uh, or any evidence to find it. So I can see why those were connected. The other interesting thing is the Moon-Eyed people were actually mentioned in John Keel's, I believe it is, the Mothman Prophecies. Yeah, that's pretty... That's um, pretty... Certain areas were considered... Like they didn't go into these caves and all this because uh the little people now like i said where the moon eyed people stop and they were again considered a uh specific race it's not a far cry for the little people the tiny people to be connected to the moon eyed people now Mm. when you start talking about the um tiny people in cherokee legend we're talking about humanoid nature spirits dwarves Mm -hmm. fairies and from these little people come and that's what we t- kind of took a detour, but back to uh, if you've heard of these stone crosses. Yes. These are not found in uh, anywhere else. These were like mm-hmm. five spots. The science behind it is they are storolites. Uh, like, sometimes you'll hear them stuff. called like fairy crosses or yes. little, they're little iron. Uh, the way it grows is so that it grows out almost in like a, a four, Six, 60 four or 90 six, degree angle. Yeah. Uh, and they form a cross like structure. They form when they're subjected to great heat and pressure uh, when the Appalachian Mountains were formed. So they're found in Virginia, North Carolina, Georgia. They're only ever found, again, in maybe like New Mexico, Brazil, and Switzerland. So these are pretty rare little things. Um, And they look like they're carved, but they're Mm -hmm. not. Yeah. Uh, It's crazy. We can put some pictures up. They're in like a T or an X shape, Mm -hmm. uh, however you're looking at them. Cherokee held these in pretty high regard. Um, They would find them. They said that they were tears from the little folk. 
they liked these, or that museum in Murphy, North Carolina, has a good collection of them. Collection of them, which uh, again, I would like to see. Um, yeah. And then if you're out and about, if you've ever found one, definitely let us know because yeah, these definitely. are really cool looking and they don't look real. Like they look like they are carved. They um, really do. They're really interesting. They almost, the structure of them almost looks kind of like, like hematite or like a tourmaline or something like that. But it comes out at all of these different angles that make it look almost kind of like a little cross or a star or something. They're really, really interesting. But I think they're, are they iron-based? They're, a, I, I believe they're a mixture of iron, possibly aluminum. Oh my God. Are you <laughs> my phone's never, uh, is always on silent. And then this. Uh, metamorphic mineral that has become famous for its twinned crystals. That is commonly found in metamorphic rocks such as schist and gneiss. It forms when shale is strongly altered by regional metamorphism often found in association with almondine garnet, muscovite, and kyanite, all of which we have in a lot of prevalence over here in Western North Carolina. So that's really neat. Yeah, so um, they revered these as like uh, signs of good luck. They ha- they have their own kind of idea. They say that they were the tears that mm-hmm. fell from the little people or the fairy-like spirits. The legend, and I don't know when this came around because this is, again, not going to be original to when they were first discovered right. um, was that the little people were gathered near the town of brass town for a day of singing and dancing when a foreign near messenger brass town falls okay cool arrived with news of the crucifixion but apparently that that's probably that legend probably sprung from this christian shit floating around the area eventually. yeah so um, that probably came about later on when we get a lot of into like the scotch irish and german descended peoples who really moved up into the mountains because the the landscape was so similar to the yeah. landscape that they were um, used the to. The term hillbilly was from Scotland. It yeah. wasn't like something yeah. that was just... Um, like, we, we get this... Why these fairies would cry when they found out about Jesus? Like, who cares? Like, they don't know. Yeah. But anyway, that was, I guess, But what... I mean, it, we, we get that sort of Christianized mythology all throughout the mountains because it was so prevalent. Uh, like, we have the, the story of the dogwood, about the dogwood being the wood that Christ's cross was made of. Now, dogwood is not native and would not have right. been found there. Well, what's funny is, but... you mentioned dogwood. Mm-hmm. Um we can go into the different clans of these little people. There's Ooh. three clans and they all have different temperaments. Oh, cool. Um, but so those little crosses are cool. If you ever found one or if you have some in your possession, let us know. Send us some pictures. Uh, let us know where you found it because apparently you can find them mm-hmm. walking around and stuff. And maybe we'll get lucky uh, next time we go up. Mm-hmm. Uh, we need to do a road trip and mm-hmm. check out like Murphy and all these other places. The book that we both just bought. Do you have it handy? Because... Uh, it is upstairs, but I can go get it. Because um, it mentions Moon-Eyed People. It and does. Um, it's actually a pretty good book. And you'll see there that you can't remove mm-hmm. the Christian influence. That's why people around here is like their grandmother might have done something that have never considered it witchcraft. But like, bitch, it is. I mean, uh, the thing about witchcraft is that you can be whatever religion you want to be and be a witch. Right. Or you can have no religion at all and be a witch. And I think that because so many witches are pagan and they revere the older gods, I think that a lot of times there's a lot of pushback when we start looking into pagans who do have a Christian base. Uh, because I think a lot of us have faced, have some trauma that's related to, you know, the Abrahamic religions from when we first started practicing. Right. Because I think well, a lot of people I mean, didn't we, understand. You know, we obviously are um, anathema to them. Mm-hmm. Um, they've never liked witches, even though they've used them and consulted them. Mm-hmm. Uh, oracles and all the different psychics, things mm-hmm. like that. So it's kind of in that same vein of everybody likes to be scared and talk shit and evil. But mm-hmm. when somebody needs something, where do they go? Right. To the witch. But what's funny, and it, and it plays into it, the Nunnahi, again, I apologize if that's incorrect, <laughs> were similar to the little people. They seem to be child-sized and almost miniature in appearance to the Cherokee. They're depicted as helpful kind. They love music, um, Mm -hmm. singing, dancing, drums. Who doesn't? But then they were, uh, in Cherokee lore, there were clans of them. Interesting. Um, There's the Rock Clan. It's the most malicious. Quick to get vengeance when offended, (laughs) especially when their space has been invaded. That's fair. Not unlike the European Fae. They're known Mm -hmm. to steal human children. So then you start talking oh, about changelings, right? Interesting. Um, 
There's the Laurel clan. Okay. They're generally benevolent, um, joyful, humorous, but they're also mischievous little tricksters, uh, nice. like so many of these spirits that we hear about. They love to play tricks. Then, bringing it back around to what you just said, there's the Dogwood clan, mm-hmm. and they are the most favorably disposed to humans. They like to be uh, serious, and they prefer to be left alone, but... I guess they're going to be the ones who actually... They're the scholars of the... (laughs) Right. I mean, um, their disposition is to also be kind and thankless. Like, they they don't expect reward or payment. Hmm. So, these little people, you've got your fairy crosses from them. Some other stuff that we know when we talk about that idea of the the Christian idea. um, This goes in regards to fairies as well, because... King James, in demonology, stated fairies were just another word for demonic entities. Anybody who worked with them was considered a witch or a sorcerer. Familiar spirits, that's Mm -hmm. what they were considered. We rely heavily on uh, these things. I know in our last episode or one before, we said we don't really know fuck all about fairies. And we don't (laughs) pretend to, and we're not going to like say what we don't know. Hopefully, we've got some people we know that are versed in fairies, so... And this isn't going to be an episode on fairies. and ge- This is more from the Cherokee Appalachian viewpoint yeah. of the little people. So we're not talking about Irish, European fae. This is strictly connected to the Cherokee in this area, mm-hmm. which is, uh, like I said, we started out researching Moon-Eyed people, or at least I did, and kind of expected it to go in this whole Welsh route. But then that kind of, you know, didn't pan out uh, as more than a legend, <laughs> which is still viable. I mean, we're, we're dealing a lot with legends here. They're also, like I said, there's a rich history and lore with the Cherokee in this area. We'd be hard to ignore the fact that they're similar in stature and the fairy folk were so supposedly they, you know, lived in the woods, caves, dwellings, the mounds. The other thing that I know you're you've got to be familiar with and i am too uh are fairy rings mm-hmm. the lore is if you see like a um ring of mushrooms mm-hmm. you can stand in it make a wish and um it'll come true um supposedly then there's the <laughs> other side of the the legend that says that you should never step into a fairy ring because right. you can be kidnapped see this is why we <laughs> this is why we talk about fae the way we do is because they're tricksters. And like mm-hmm. I said, you've got those different facets of them where, okay, well, they seem like they're helpful and they mm-hmm. want to do that. But then the other ones seem like, you know, this is a sacred space you're not supposed to be in. The right. uh, Cherokee did not go into their spaces. Mm-hmm. They respected them and they're like, oh, I'm not fucking with that. Yeah. But um, <laughs> something that I found is really cool. I wish I could could have found more about it. And maybe... Um, Over time, we will. In an 1876 New York Times article, it describes numerous graves discovered in Tennessee that contained skeletons of pygmies. Um, They were initially thought to be the remains of children, but when later examined, it states, in the state of Tennessee, burying grounds have been found where the skeleton appear all to have been pygmies. It is affirmed that the skulls are found to have possessed the dentes sapentai wisdom teeth. I just butchered that, but... So they found them, you know, kids don't have wisdom teeth. So they must have belonged to persons of mature age. Two bodies that were found in the vast limestone cavern, neither of them (gasps) more than four feet high. The hair seemed to be sandy or inclining to the yellow. (gasps) Now, according to Cherokee legend, the little people, that's where they inhabited. Right. So it's kind of funny. They had that conflict and they pushed them over to the Tennessee side of things. Right. (gasps) Um, One far theory is presented that the Tennessee graves did contain pygmy remains and that the pygmies arrived in ancient times from Southeast Asia. Um, So that's kind of one of the little theories. But um, I thought that was really cool because I was like, holy shit. Yeah. Pygmy skeletons. And it was covered by the New York Times in 1876. That's Um, really neat. I wonder what happened to those skeletons. Where are they now? Um, Maybe we can find out more about that. I I would Um, love to. That'd be awesome. So obviously at that time in that viewpoint where the celebration and work with fairies was witchcraft. Mm -hmm. So they didn't like it. I mean, of course, you know, you turn to these cross, these little fairy crosses Mm -hmm. and that's kind of a blend where both consider them. It's almost like they're forcing that, that lore of them being their tears to the crucifixion. So it's, Mm -hmm. it seems like like anybody that finds them, consider them kind of a good omen, good luck. Not unlike the fairy rings, which I mean, oh God, I would probably stand in a fairy ring. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it calls to me. But I mean, I, mean, I would I mean, also me probably. Too. I, but I, it's not unlike me to just run away for a day. So, <laughs> to right. Mountains. So if it's going to be like a, <laughs> yeah, it's, if you're, you're going to come back as a changeling 
or they'll change their mind. They'll yeah. just drop you back off. Yeah. Here we talk about, you know, them being pranksters and liking the, the music. The legends say that if um, the tiny people were seen by an adult, they would beg them not to say anything. And they mm. would reward those who kept their word by helping their family out in times of need. Mm. There's variations in their mannerisms. Some are good, evil, or indifferent. One of the common beliefs is that they cause mischief and distractions. They lived mm. near caves. It seems like children had a better time with those, but then you get into the whole changeling and being stolen and right. all this fun stuff. It's but- so interesting that the the myths are so similar Across continents, you know what right. I mean? Yeah, in connecting to that pygmy tribe of Ohio, we should look into that lay at a different time. Mm-hmm. So here's a really weird little sighting story, because I couldn't find many of them. It's, you know, stuff like this is always lore or passed down, or somebody saw this or somebody saw that. In 1891, a professor in North Carolina had a knock, and some children stood there and said they saw some floating people on the side of Chimney Rock, and we've both been there. Yeah. He dismissed it as mm-hmm. it goes, and um, then he got a uh, another visitor, an elderly, elderly woman from town, who uh, said, please come see these. She reportedly uh, referred to them as ghosties on the side of Chimney Rock. Oh, wow. So he decided he would accompany her and check out these things floating around. So to his amazement, he saw them. He, dozens of bright beings flying around the side of the mountain. Oh, wow. Uh, they were bright, wearing white gowns. They looked human, but were flying. Dozens of them, everywhere from men, women, to children, is what he saw in, I guess, all these things. So, you know, a, a little majority of... Oh, wow. So, multiple people saw the same thing. These these beings that were luminous uh, of all different ages and sexes flying around Chimney Rock. Yeah, and I guess that legend still persists around uh, that area Mm -hmm. in Chimney Rock. Some claim they were angels, of course, Mm -hmm. but that's a whole other story. But with the Cherokee tribe, I mean, they still attribute that to whether it's the Moon-Eyed People, the Dogwoods, Laurel, the different clans. They uh, have fairies helping Cherokee on hunting trips. So again, I guess it just kind of depends on the other fairy or what fairy you're you're working with. We talked about brownies. That's mentioned with these, that kind of idea of like a helpful home spirit Mm kind of thing. It seems like they were kind of like left alone. So you've got this contrast between the Moon-Eyed People that were considered a separate race from them. They push them out of their areas. Mm -hmm. Then you have the lore with the fairy folk so um where they work with them or revere them and consider their little tear stone crosses to be good luck and special so i think that's really you can make the jump but i don't i don't think these stories of the moon-eyed people connect to the same kind of supernatural idea we are familiar with you know the appalachian area we will do this fall uh we want to go out to brown mountain and shoot Mm -hmm. some video there Hopefully we'll see something. Um, I went a few years ago and we saw some lights. That's awesome. Um, and there's a lot kind of going around there. Mm-hmm. If you think about, if you've seen the movie Hellier. Mm-mm, I haven't. You should. It's about a town in, I think, Tennessee. Okay. And it's about goblins. Ooh. But in connection to Brown Mountain, there's said to be an, these underground tunnels that they travel through. And I think it's all free on YouTube. I think it's four episodes. Okay. It's definitely kind of cool that they're connected to Brown Mountain. But as far as the lights are concerned, what do they call them? Ghost lights, swamp lights, and they call them fairy lights. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot going on in the Appalachian Mountains and not just our little tip, just the <laughs> tip of North Carolina. I think it's really cool because it's so rich with lore from everything from paranormal to like these cryptids Mm -hmm. i would consider the moon-eyed people to fall under maybe a cryptid category of this weird kind of race that may or may not have existed yeah Um, and i mean we get into this sort of thing because immediately i think you know everyone's gonna go well you know ancient aliens so (laughs) i mean that's always a, a a thought too because when we get into these older civilizations a lot of them and talk about experiencing a race of smaller people who looked kind of like them, but not quite. And they either revere them as some kind of other being, whether they were some kind of, they revered them as gods or they revered them as, you know, like uh fey folk or something like that. So the fact that we have this all throughout, I think is really, really interesting. The weirdest part to me is it's understood that in the Cherokee legend that they were driven out and mm-hmm. ran off, but I cannot figure out or find a reason why. 
Uh, yeah, and a lot of that, sometimes that's just lost time. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, uh, I think the Cherokee language was developed in 1850, 60, something like that. So before that period of time, you know, there weren't written lecker- records. Mm-hmm. It was all word of down. mouth. Yeah. yeah. So sometimes things such. get lost just to time. Right. And we can't deny the fact that they do kind of look like greys. The consensus mm-hmm. is it's not related to any kind of a, but I mean, you know, we don't know. There's yeah. plenty of uh, Native American tales of star people. We'll get into those at later dates. Everything from like the Southwest, you know, to me kind of points to our little version of what we have going on with in that area with strange lights, plenty of UFO sightings, yeah, um, Bigfoot sightings. I wanted yeah. to get in that too, but you know, at the same time, I wanted to do something a little bit smaller that maybe it wasn't as um, as well known as well known. And you kind of fall into that part of it being so localized. There's not a lot of information. It's still a pretty big mystery. We'll probably never know where that statue came from. Yeah, but it's just weird. I don't know where it was that whole time. I guess maybe the farmer had it it was just all i know is it was found Maybe on that farm it, yeah in like 1840 have... and then wow. on display in murphy so i mean it all stayed pretty local so maybe i mean it's... it probably got lost in somebody's attic you know what i mean i mean it's just it's really cool how that little and that's the very tip of north carolina before yeah. you're in tennessee so it's worth checking out on our ventures into the mountains definitely and all these little fairy crosses which again we'll put up pictures google them they just some of them are tiny some of them are Mm -hmm. very large it sounds like the cherokee originally saw them as like maybe representing like the four cardinal points in direction and it wasn't until later that the cross idea kind of came with them but the consensus is they came out of fairy tears they fell and turned into those little stone crosses so that's kind of the biggest connection I could find with the Moon-Eyed people and them is that they're kind of in the general area. They're kind of together. But you don't really know what you're dealing with here. And that's kind of what we do anyway is you would think, okay, there's no way Bigfoot is related to all this stuff. But there's so many things about it being a dimensional or communicating with it telepathically. Bigfoot's been connected to aliens and mm-hmm. all this other stuff. So there's a lot to explore with that. And it seems like, you know, the Appalachian kind of gets loaded down with a lot of this. So we're lucky enough that we get to explore that. You know, when we can, we'll take trips for sure. Kind of see the general vibe out there. I know when we go, it's a very charged yes. area. But we did see some lights. Uh, like I said, we'll talk about that later when we actually go out there. Hopefully we'll see some more. It's real, real weird. It's hard to explain. Me as, uh, as kind of a skeptic, I'm like, well, that's not really, doesn't stand out. And then it's like, oh, this one scaled the mountain and pretty mm-hmm. quickly and followed it down. And it's midnight under a full moon. Like who's out there? doing yeah. something but i feel like the moon eyed people is a new little bit of information that we have and more that we know now yeah. a little bit as much as we can yeah and keep that in our back pocket if we're out there and we ever see one i mean that'd be pretty cool so i wanted to touch back on the uh starlight mm-hmm. so known as fairy stones or fairy cross because they embody an energy that will help you contact uh help you to make contact with beings from the natural world oh see i did so know. That's kind of an interesting thing. Someone please send us a fairy cross. It, yeah. Can we I, find them on eBay? I, I, I don't know. I'm sure we could. <laughs> I've seen them at gem shows and things, but it's, I almost feel like if you're really going to want to get that kind of a benefit from the stone, I you feel like find it, it. Yeah. I feel like it has to be given to you and you have to find it. It sounds like maybe this is almost something where. It's only the hottest, most humid part. Let's go. I mean. Uh, <laughs> Trapes around the rivers and the mountains. Oh, man, I would. I would in a heartbeat. Oh, for sure. Also have soothing, calming energy that helps to relieve stress, anxiety, and fear, and are useful to help you stop smoking. Oh, well. <laughs> Maybe I do need a couple. Uh, good grounding stone. I mean, anything with iron is going to be really good for grounding. Yeah. But here's what's interesting. Hmm. And, of course, this might be another rabbit hole. Iron... Mm-hmm. is like a big no-no for, uh, for, the for protection fae. from the Fae. Yeah. Um, not because of them. When you look at the European mm-hmm. and the Celtic idea of the Fae, it's like, keep iron. If you want to work with them, I wouldn't be carrying around a bunch of iron jewelry and stuff. So it's just kind of funny how there are those connections there. But no wonder they thought these things are crazy because you find them. Yeah. And they look so perfect. 
Um, you don't think they'd be formed naturally. But that doesn't lessen the the fact that items like that, they have properties attributed to them. I think it's one or the other, or they, they kind of blend together. It's like, okay, well, we can explain why it looks like this. It's not supernatural. But mm-hmm. yet, in witchcraft, we know things are attributed, certain properties and energies, sometimes you just know. Sometimes yeah. it's passed down or you Google it. But at the end of the day, you having one of those little crosses may or may not be from a fairy, Mm -hmm. but it still might hold all those properties that's been attributed to it Mm -hmm. uh, because we've built up this kind of lore uh, that's been going on for a while. So yeah, here the iron would be a good thing. Yeah. So the energy of these stones is known to be helpful for helpful for anyone who would like to work with beings who inhabit the natural world, but they will also aid you to make contact with other beings here on earth, including animal and plant spirits. That's really interesting. I mean, when we talk about witchcraft in terms of what we would use these things for, I would immediately go to the meaning of cross wo- crossroads. Crossroads is where you connect with the other. That's where I go and I find my goddess, your goddess, Hecate. You know, that's where I connect with her. I would immediately associate that with number one, being a grounding stone because of the higher iron content Mm -hmm. and then connecting that with the other, which it sounds like it's, it's good for that. And, and it's good to connect with these more natural beings, you know, well, crossroads is already where the spirits are supposed to gather. Uh, And these aren't, when we say crosses, these aren't the Jesus yeah crosses these are equal arm crosses Mm -hmm. and i like the idea of you know we talk about attributing stones and working with stuff to communicate with things labradorite's one of my favorites Mm -hmm. but it's like well this i I could walk out and find this in our area Mm -hmm. and this would be really cool to work with and not unlike the kudzu i mean Mm -hmm. you're thinking okay well this reminds me of a crossroads um so you've got spirit work to me with the iron and the equal arm cross makes me think of Kind of the hoodoo, uh, mm-hmm. taking those nails like we talked and tying them into a cross with like a red thread. Yeah. As a protection or an X. Mm-hmm. So there's just, it'd be really, uh, we need to get some. Yeah, we do. We need to get like a handful of fairy, <laughs> fairy crosses. Like I said, I don't know how hard it is to find them, but I know they're only like in five places in the world. Yeah. I think it said uh, Switzerland. Hold on. New, I, I New hope- Mexico, Switzerland, Brazil. And then Georgia, Virginia, and North Carolina. The Appalachian area, yeah. yeah. Sounds like they were formed when the uh, mountains were. And then it's just, it ties in to, like so local, like that energy. I'm sure we could find some. Oh, yeah. Like I said, it would be fun to, to buy them, but it's even better to find them. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure they're, yeah, I'm sure they're in shops. There's probably tons of people. They, I mean, if they're out here looking for ginseng, I'm sure people find the crosses. Oh, yeah. Don't yeah, fuck that's with a big people's thing. ginseng oh, yeah, don't in these fuck, mountains. Don't. Don't. Leave it alone. Leave it Somebody's alone. Somebody's claimed it. Yep. And will probably shoot you. Yep. I've, I've seen, like, the ginseng wars thing going up <laughs> up in the mountains, and it's it's nuts. I just... I've seen it a couple of times. Like, I've seen some ginseng out there before, and I'm like, no, don't do it. <laughs> Leave it alone. Where the fuck did you get that ginseng from? <laughs> Nothing. No, I was just looking for fairy crosses. Yeah. I didn't mean to. It got caught on my shoe. <laughs> right. Um, that's all I have come across. Okay. Unfortunately, I didn't see a lot about sightings. But I think that's one of those things where you get more into, that's not just something you're going to Google. You're going to find people that have seen the Fae, have seen little humanoid type creatures. There was one name, and it was a Cherokee word, but it meant not human. And that's like Mm kind of creepy to me. Because it's like, well, that just could be anything. Um, And that's what they refer to them as, is other other than human. So that's kind of cool. But the one thing I fucking forgot to mention, and you will love this. Okay. And we'll talk about it more, I'm sure, down the road. But in this whole vein of these are the Pukwudgie. Yeah! Yeah, and how do we forget? So for those who don't know, they're little magical people. Is is the name Pukwudgie? Is that, I guess, is that... I think it's um, Algonquin. Yes, you're right. Am I? <laughs> yeah, because I'm looking at this word like, what the fuck? And then, you, but you said it. They're like knee high, just mm-hmm. like the other little people. Their name literally means person of the wilderness. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're considered to be spirits of the forest. Sometimes they have a sweet smell uh, associated with flowers. Ooh, I didn't know that. Yeah. They are ma- they have magical powers that vary from the different tribes, but they usually include um, being able to turn invisible, mm-hmm. confusing people, making them forgetful. 
maybe there's a Pukwudgie that follows me around. Um, <laughs> they like to shape shift into cougars. I mean, there's cougars around here or other dangerous animals. Okay. Or bring harm to people by staring at them. Ooh. So you don't want to be stared down by a Pukwudgie. Interesting. I don't know if any of our listeners uh, listen to uh, the Lore podcast uh, by Aaron Mankey, but he does a great episode uh, where he talks about Pukwudgies. And he actually talks about a Pukwudgie sighting, a modern Pukwudgie sighting uh, by a man that is absolutely just hair raising. Uh, so definitely give that a listen if you haven't already. I want to check that out. Yeah, it's really, really I do, good. Because I do really like it's that It's one podcast. of my favorite favorite episodes of lore because uh, there are some episodes where i'm really really into it and some episodes where i'm not like i really loved there was one episode on i think he the episode he did on hh H. holmes which i think he's done a couple on on holmes now who i think is absolutely terrifying uh, <laughs> that were really good uh there's one on shapeshifter uh big wolf type thing uh skinwalker yeah yeah he did one on Skinwalkers recently. That I, was really, really good. We really need to do one about Skinwalkers and the Wendigo because, like, the yes. Wendigo is a, a Skinwalker yeah. type critter, but you usually have to become a Wendigo by killing and consuming human flesh. So, yeah. uh, if there's any Wendigos out there, we'll talk to you. Yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> send us an email. Follow us on Instagram because um, I want to talk to these. You don't want to talk to skinwalkers, no. I don't think. Um, no. It takes a, a dedication to become one of those that I'm not beyond. But, um, <laughs> you know, we'll see. I mean, I'll think about it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I haven't yet. But, you know, there are some nice abilities that come along with that. I mean, that's true. But you can also shapeshift. This will be a whole episode. But you can also shapeshift in the astral sense with flying ointments and meditation yes. and trance work. We'll do shapeshifting. With an accompanying, um, maybe like cryptid episode slash paranormal Yay. with I love that. Wendigos and stuff. I love that idea. You might be thinking, well, okay, we had a ghost episode, spirits, mm-hmm. working with them. You had a, a witchcraft and that was very like local. And now you're talking about um, strange beings and things like that, but they're not far removed. I think anybody listening to this, especially witches or anybody interested in the occult, are very familiar with paranormal slash cryptid type things mm-hmm. because... I mean, it, I think it takes a, a yearning for that, like, the mysterious and the unknown. I mean, we all come from that X-Files bullshit. Mm-hmm. Um, that was my shit. Unsolved I Mysteries. I such a fucking crush on... Scully! <laughs> on both of them. <laughs> okay, well, that's fair enough. But Scully all the way. And I mean, David Duchovny, I mean, come I mean, on. look at him. Especially Fox, in his Mulder. oh, especially in his X Files days, holy crap! Yeah, cute. <laughs> and Julian Anderson is only she's both stunning. of them are only getting more attractive. I know as time goes on, all that weird shit. We're into it, and I think mm. that's what we're trying to do here. Is we're talking about the shit we love that's local. Some of it won't be super local, you know. We that's where we want to start out. It's definitely talking about the things that are a little bit more closer to us because I think that these are. We can use these things within our own witchcraft. You know, when we talk about the moon-eyed people and the little people of the mountains, I think that these are things that we can incorporate into our own craft. Number one, using the the Mm -hmm. light. Well, we even talked about working with uh, nature spirits and and the like. And what are these? This is just the, uh, the Cherokee idea of these nature spirits. Right. So I think looking into the little people, I think that these are definitely, you know, you can petition these creatures and depending you know on their temperament depending on which uh don't fuck with pukwudgies but maybe you know pukwudgies i think it's one of those things where it's like well number one you have this sort of gorgon medusa aspect of it of you know don't look at it in the eye but uh or even the basilisk don't look at it in the eye and i think that that's a a that's how i usually hold conversations with people in general yeah is i don't try to look them in the eye yeah you know, it's a it's a sign of respect is to maybe not stare at them in their in their eyes. Don't stare at them in the eyes. It'll yeah, get aggressive. Like because that's that's a challenge. So uh, you know, even with uh, you know, I have at the moment three cats. So <laughs> because I picked another one up yesterday. <laughs> it's a it's always a party around here. Even with cats, you don't want to come at them directly. You want to come at them kind of from the side. You don't want to stare at them. And, you <laughs> know, the, the shine, uh, showing of affection is really, 
you know, slow blinking and, you know, I'm not staring at you. I'm not trying to make you pray. Approach, you know, your uh, puckwudgies and your fairy folk <laughs> like you would a stray dog or cat. Yeah. Um, there's a chance you're going to get bit. But I mean, that's true. They could be really cool to you. Yeah. We already exactly. talked about like respecting things and like honoring them and leaving things. So, I mean, that's that's all going to be a, a theme through this. Yeah. Um, whether you're talking about working with demons, fairies familiars animals plants all of that flows in together so if you were going to try to enlist the help of one of the little people what would you offer them did you well see they don't seem to they don't seem to really want to the one like i believe the dogwood clan was they they kind of are helpful if they're going to be helpful without mm-hmm. expecting anything but they don't really um, seek them out right and I, I and i haven't read anything i'm sure there there might be something out there but i i, I don't think the Cherokee worked with them in that sense or okay. left them things. Just respect for their territory and their, you know, areas mm-hmm. um, was about all you got. And if they were going to favor you, mm-hmm. they would. Unless the only thing I found was that like adults, if they see them and they begged them not to, they would reward them for keeping their secret that they saw one. It doesn't seem to be the same as with working with like maybe an ancestor type spirit where we talk about mm-hmm. leaving tobacco or whiskey mm-hmm. um, or pennies. So I don't think it's that necessarily a relationship, but I would think, it, you know, we go out into the mountains, say you want to do, uh, one time we went camping for the blood moon. If we go out, we know that's the, an area where the lore and this energy happens. So I would think just being respectful, uh, maybe don't follow my idea of stepping in a fairy circle. Yeah, maybe not. Um, or, uh, like I said, step in it, make a wish, see what happens. Uh, <laughs> if you if you're like us and you like to live life on the edge, but if you find <laughs> yeah, if you find a ring of stones or mushrooms that's said to be like a little fairy circle and stuff, mm-hmm. small children, watch out for them because yeah. they might want to steal them. Yeah, that's fair. If you they're do- squishy, yeah, and you might be okay with that. <laughs> yeah. And they might come back better. They'll become back different. I think we all know people that are like, there's something off about them mm-hmm. in a good way. Yeah. They're odd in a good way. Were they a changeling? I don't know. I mean. Did your parents leave you in a circle? My mom hit my head on the bathroom door once <laughs> uh, when I was little, but I don't think she ever left me anywhere. It happens. Yeah. Kids get dropped. Yep. But we're what we're saying is like a fairy or a changeling could take the abuse. Mm-hmm. Yeah, changelings will, that's a whole thing. We'll talk about that later, probably. Because I love all that stuff oh, like, I do that too. follows around it. I think it's um, fascinating. Yeah, I think if you found a fairy cross, the idea would be the Cherokee saw it as a gift, um, a good luck charm. So it doesn't seem to be like a don't touch or don't take. It seems like the mm-hmm. consensus is if you find one of those, you're lucky. It's like a four leaf yeah. clover, maybe. And then you could go into using that as luck because if they're so rare and they're hard to find and you come across one Mm -hmm. use it for luck yeah i don't know if this has become more of a fairy cross episode or (laughs) um but i think little people in general kind of with moon-eyed people on the peripheral i think the moon-eyed people feel more removed to us because they no longer inhabit this area you know they were pushed out and you know it would be more of a tennessee side of things i don't know i kind of get the feeling that maybe the moon-eyed people aren't around anymore because there was this great battle and stuff like that you know the last of that civilization what if they're the fucking out. goblins that in hellier hey that's an idea maybe i don't even know if they're bearded or not but you should watch it anybody listening should watch it because it's really cool they um even try to do like fucking evp work and stuff Ooh. calling out for them and some shit moves around in the woods Goblin lore, underground dwelling creatures. I could see that. Maybe. Maybe. I'm not saying there's just not a lot of information about what happened after they drove them out. So maybe they're That's goblins. That's true. They're called goblins. Maybe maybe they changed through mythology and now there's something else. So that's mm-hmm. interesting. We'll have to look into that. To end on the moon-eyed people, we're not talking about, which is seems like we don't have a lot of information about. It's a pretty adamant story in chair. This isn't, oh, well, we heard this one. Like, they're pretty consistent with saying, like, these this race existed. Mm-hmm. This is where they were. This is what they built. This is what they look like. Can you just discount it? I mean. I, I wouldn't. All these tribes, even ones that weren't necessarily close to one another, mm-hmm. share these These, these experiences. overarching and, mythologies, and, yeah. And then you talk about Sasquatch and Bigfoot. Maybe the difference is because they actually revered this thing and mm-hmm. honored it and thought it godlike. Mm-hmm. You tell me. Yeah. If you're a dick about it, it's probably not going to show up to you. 
I mean, yeah. And I mean, with all of the, well, we'll, we'll save that for the Bigfoot episode. Yeah. yeah. Um, we'll get to one. But I think that's a good consensus in witchcraft as well. And any kind of spiritual, paranormal experience. It almost seems like the more open and receptive you are, and I'm not saying foolish about it, maybe mentally you put it out there and there you seem more approachable and it's like, I like this guy's energy. Mm. Um, and if you're a dick, you might get probed. I don't know. So. <laughs> But you might be into that kind of thing. I mean... So we'll see what happens when we go to Brown Mountain. Use enough lube. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, they might not be concerned with such things. Mm, true. Uh, true. Just have an iron or a little fairy cross on you and you'll be good. <laughs> you'll be safe. Yeah, I think that's a good third episode, kind of. Mm-hmm. Getting in our little cryptid side of the cursed yeah. cast. That's something that I, I really... I'm excited about because I... I don't know. I just... I'm excited to blend the two. I'm excited to talk about the witchcraft elements of the the cryptids. We will make it work. Yeah. Trust us. Yeah. We will have a good reason why you should work with a chupacabra. Hell yeah. Sucking goats. I want a chupacabra familiar. Yeah. It's dope as shit. Suck, <laughs> if there's anything less satanic, you tell me. Sucking the blood out of goats. I mean, I'm into that. Hail Satan. Hail Satan. Um, but okay, so then my other thing would be like, what can we talk about for the Patreon supporters? Because we do have one modest uh, plug. Um, <laughs> and we do have our first Patreon. Yeah. Uh, Melissa Duty. Um, Thank you, Melissa. We appreciate it. Um, maybe you weren't supposed to call her out by day, but we. Maybe not. We told but... you you'd get a shout out, maybe. We'll just call her, we'll just call her Melissa. I do know her. It's a pity uh, donation. It's it's like a pity. I doubt it. It's, it's for excitement. She's excited. But yeah, so uh, we plan on having bonus content on there. I think we had a a ghost story or two Mm -hmm. to throw up from our last episodes. Have we had any goblin experiences Fairies, I really have gone from moon-eyed people to goblins now. But I mean, back it up. You know... I think it makes sense, though, because there's a lot of overlap. And I think that, you know, you're kind of on the right track. I mean... Pygmies, brownies. It, there's so much overlap. Oh, yes. <laughs> I don't know if I was hungry mentioning brownies or hungry talking about skinwalkers and how to become a Wendigo. Either way. Either that way. seems to be the theme. <laughs> um, I think that about wraps it up. That's Yeah. But also, if you want to keep up with us and um, pictures of investigations uh, that we'll slowly be putting up, uh, we have an Instagram um, that we run a Twitter. A Twitter. Um, that's it on that front. We should have a site up with our um, Podbean host. So you can check that as well. But then we are going to be on all sorts of platforms. We hope by the time this is out, it's iTunes, all the good stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, Google Play. Just look for us. Just yeah. Look. Just, but, um, just look up Cursed, uh, Cursed Podcast. Up, 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 up. Uh, But yeah, so um, I think that does it for today. We've either given you some good information or confused you. Um, (laughs) This is only a snippet. Like, go out there and look for stuff. If you know stuff, we want to know. Yeah, Um, uh, just reach out and uh, talk to us on Instagram or Twitter. Or send us an email at cursedcast at gmail.com. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. And a YouTube to follow. We'll put this on there for videos of stuff. So Yep. So um, we'll definitely have a YouTube presence and I might even make a Discord so I can teach you how to use Discord. Uh, but Discord is a really... Yeah. Do you know how to use Discord? Do you know Discord? <laughs> no. Oh, okay, boy. Okay. Yeah, teach me. All right. Uh, so we may make a Discord forum so that you guys can interact with each other and interact with us. So you oh. can share all kinds of different uh, articles and experiences and stuff like that. Is this that. what they called back in my day a message board? Kind of, sort of. Is this a live journal? No. <laughs> no. Oh, I'm no. just kidding. Uh, Children. So... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. Uh, no, it's not envision-free. Um, but it, it's sort of set up kind of like that. Okay. Uh, but um, it's it's done differently. It's actually a platform that's mainly used for uh, Twitch streamers and gamers. Hey, guess who's on Twitch? Hey, guess who's a gamer? This bitch. Sorry. Um, but I, I do think maybe we could get like a, a, a small child staff um, that keeps <laughs> us up to date with all um the memes and such and it doesn't it's not illegal because we're not paying them (laughs) (laughs) it's volunteer work yeah school credit that's right or something or for slender man's (laughs) favorite 
Um, okay, well, <laughs> this has been fun. Yes, and we will see you guys next episode. Bye. Bye. Cursed is a bi-weekly podcast produced by Bones McWilliams and Cricket Word. Editing by Bones McWilliams and Nicholas Ely. The theme for Cursed is Voice of the Trees by Sun and Moon Dance. Check them out on Spotify, YouTube, or at sunandmoondance.bandcamp.com. Follow Cursed on Instagram, Twitter, and become a patron at patreon.com slash cursedcast. But we're, what we're saying is, like, a fairy or a changeling could take the abuse. Mm-hmm. They wouldn't, like, they probably, their skull wouldn't... Maybe not. Smush. Maybe not. They're not as fragile, maybe? <laughs>